If you personally were called upon to stand up to the President of the United States or a brand new federal administration in the U.S. government, you could scarcely come to that moment with a better God-given name. My name is Deb Swackhammer, and I'm a former professor from the University of Minnesota. Swackhammer, you heard her right. Scientist Deborah Swackhammer appeared before Congress last month to testify about the need for robust and independent science and making governmental decisions about public health and safety. Professor Swackhammer was there to give basically a warning about the appearance of politicizing and marginalizing science within the EPA. Down to the hollowing out of academic scientists on the EPA board that she chairs. We now know that behind the scenes, the EPA was trying to get her to change her testimony so she would be more in line with agency talking points. Professor Swackhammer responded, quote, my testimony is submitted and embargoed. I assure you my main message is my, mine, mine alone. And it is that strong science is needed to ensure public health. And then scientist Deborah Swackhammer went to Capitol Hill exactly as she promised she would, and she delivered her testimony despite that pressure. Joining us now for the interview tonight is Deborah Swackhammer. She is chair of the EPA's Board of Scientific Counselors. She's Professor Emeritus of Environmental Health Sciences at the University of Minnesota. Uh, professor, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, you are currently chair of the Board of Scientific Counselors at the EPA. That's correct. What is the role of that board? This board is uh, reports to the assistant administrator of research and development at EPA and we, we guide the assistant administrator in the research that's done internally at EPA. Okay. So it's all about just what's going on in EPA. We don't deal with regulations, we don't deal with policy, we're dealing with the, the kind of the basic science that's going into eventually maybe to support regulations but it's we're overseeing that science and giving advice on is it the right science are they doing it with the best methodology is it you know you know the gold standard is it going to withstand scrutiny um, when it goes so you're to helping courts. the decision makers the active decision makers at EPA make sense of and understand the import and the solidity of the science that's going into EPA decisions yeah and it's even a little further upstream than that is it good science mm -hmm. is it the right science what is the state of that board now? Well, um, many of the, most of the members have been told they are not going to be uh, continued into a second term. And so uh, the board that used to be about um, 68 members is now going to end up being um, 11 members as of September 1. Because uh, so many of those members were going to have the, a first term renewal, but now those, <clears throat> those members aren't going to have a first term re renewal. So. Uh, basically, the board has been um, kind of decimated, mm -hmm. and uh, our activities have been essentially suspended. We're sort of in suspended animation because all of our future meetings have also been canceled. All of your future meetings have yes, been canceled. Yes, we had we had six scheduled um, in the in the uh, fall, and then we were in the process of deciding how those uh, what the agendas were going to be and and how those meetings were going to move forward, and they all were canceled because there are no committee members to attend them. I mean, we don't have enough warm bodies to keep BOSC going. BOSC is the acronym. Um, given what the role of this board is, which seems crucial when you describe it in the sort of layman's terms that you just described it, is it your sense that EPA is replacing the role of this science advisory board with something else? Are they getting uh, advice on how to interpret scientific problems and scientific work and uh, the science done within the EPA from people other than the scientists who used to do it? I don't know how they're going to be doing that unless they're doing it internally. So if you're going to have really good science to support strong regulations, because you know they go to court and you have to really have robust science in order to withstand that, you have to have peer review of that science. So you do the science and then I look at it as an outsider and I say, you know, you could have tweaked this or maybe we want to do that or you didn't include this study and you should have, you know. Um, then you're getting that outside review, a fresh set of eyes, an objective review. And without that, you can really go astray. You really don't have strong science. So EPA is going to continue to, doing, to do science, but they're not going to have that really strong outside independent viewpoint for some time because BOSC, the Board of Scientific Counselors, it's going to take them six to nine months to probably get that repopulated, mm -hmm. get new meetings scheduled, and actually do anything. So they're going to miss about a year of valid, important, kind of critical science advice. It's, it's a very critical time right now for them. How unusual was it for you to um, get this pressure that you got from the new chief of staff at the EPA uh, about your congressional testimony? 
Well, it was highly unusual for me because I've only testified in front of Congress a few times. So that alone was a pretty unusual experience. But the um, getting these emails the night before was very disturbing. It was very, um, I have to say, I was pretty intimidated um, because I had made it very clear to everyone that I was testifying as an independent scientific expert and I was not testifying as an EPA witness. And I had told EPA that and cleared it with their ethics folks. So I knew what I could and could not do, mm -hmm. given that I was also chair of this committee. So I, I was following what I thought were the right rules. And after the, um, the first exchange of emails, we, we kind of sorted out that um, I'm not an EPA witness. But then I kept getting these emails. And then I got that final email, which was, we want you to change your testimony. And it, it was a minor point, but it was a it was changing the message I was giving. It was changing the wording. And I thought, who is who are they to be telling me what I'm supposed to be saying when it's my testimony? And furthermore, I've already submitted it. So I, I was very intimidated by that. I really didn't, I, I wasn't happy about that. And you gave your testimony as you intended to give your testimony? Absolutely. Deborah Swackhammer, chair of the EPA's Board of Scientific Counselors, emeritus professor at the University of Minnesota. Thank you for helping us understand this um, at all levels. And thank you for what you did. Thank you so much. It's good to meet you. Thank you. Thanks. We'll be right back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.